In order to understand anything in life, you define what you're trying to accomplish. By doing this, you therefore make it easier to see in your own eyes your own personal actions, and it therefore creates a plan so that you can accomplish your task. In my search of discovering parkour, I decided to find someone who knew a lot about it so they could define the sport in a way that was different from a typical dictionary definition. I'm Joe Canato, and I've been working at GCA Parkour and Freerunning for, well, it started in November 2011, um, but it developed out of my original position taking over a class that already existed here. So that started in January of 2011, so quite a while now, over four years. And I first started off just as a coach who developed the program, and, and now I'm the director of parkour. So defining parkour and free running has is, is kind of been in a, a big debate ever since the internet and parkour and free running kind of happened. So typically people say parkour is more uh, practical and efficient movement where the free running side is more the creative aspect, where you'll be adding more flips and spins and twists rather than say how to climb properly or land properly or to do like a precise type of jump or landing. And to be honest, at least here at GCA, we consider parkour and free running a, a healthy mix of each other, where maybe parkour does relate more to the practical and efficient movement. But we also believe that there is some practicality from learning flips, such as just having a better air awareness. So even though that may fall under free running, I still feel like there are free running aspects that mix into parkour. So with that, I'd say free running is more of an extension upon parkour where it could be more creative or there are practical aspects. So really we mesh them together pretty well. It's really hard to put in perspective what parkour and fearing really are to someone who's only seen people doing huge flips and large jumps or seen building gaps on YouTube. It puts a false image in people's head that sway their idea of the sport. Most people who are not educated on it think it's a bunch of teenagers throwing themselves in dangerous environments. It's behind these daring jumps that hundreds of hours go into training on trampolines and mats in safe, gymnastic-like environments with coaches who are spotting and providing feedback. It's not this crazy sport that everyone thinks it is. It can reach the extreme level, but only when the athlete feels comfortable. Parkour is and can be for everyone. Well, about parkour and the whole dangerous thing, as long as you're aware of your surroundings, uh, you practice your technique every day, there's discipline involved, as long as you know what you're doing with all of that and you're serious about the sport, there's no way that you could be one of those guys that ends up hurting themselves all over the place and gets in trouble with police or security or just property owners in general. I think if you, um, you know, master your craft, you know, everything is down to the millimeter, as David Bell once said, um, as long as you know what you're doing and practice over and over and over again, there's discipline involved and you're just training every day or as much as you can without bothering anybody, you can make it convincing to people that don't know about the sport that it's not a dangerous sport. But really, it's an art form related to movement in any environment, whether it's like urban or natural, and because there are progressions for everything, just like in gymnastics, where you see them do extreme things, and but they do it safely because they progressed up to that in the right way. There are people who get into it and just maybe throw themselves off of stuff, whether it's, say, jumping from building to building. That is not parkour. Just going for it and not thinking or assessing parkour really is having a good understanding of the mentality of what it would take to achieve something and being willing to, to take the risk, but at a, and to understand the risk. And if we were to get hurt, we wouldn't be able to do what we love. So we actually really assess the risk. It's important to know what parkour can be on the opposite side of the extreme spectrum. The sport has the ability to bring out so many other lessons that life has to offer, which makes it unique.
Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, I think the most important thing, it's more about, you know, self-development. You know, it's about pushing your own comfort zone and your own boundaries. It's not like, you know, football or baseball where you're competing against, like, you know, like your teammates or another team. You know, it's just strictly, you know, how comfortable you are and, you know, being with the other parkour athletes, we tend to develop, like, this positive, constructive vibe that allows us to do these skills that you see. In soccer, everyone has their favorite move to use when getting past an opponent or to create a better opportunity to gain an advantage. The same principles apply toward parkour. In soccer, it may just be something like a step over or up to something more complicated like a hocus pocus. In parkour, a simple move like a vault can be used to get around something. But just like in soccer, higher levels of expertise and fluidity can be achieved in parkour. The levels that are achieved depend on the individual's preference, skill level, and practice. Uh, okay, so my favorite move to do is a double back because it's just, uh, people think of it as like this crazy, you know, super complicated, hard, big trick, when in reality, you know, compared to some of the other stuff, it's not too difficult. Um, it's, I think it's just a beautiful trick. I like, uh, Standing broad jumps. I like to jump really far. So whether it's running or standing, I like to jump from one thing to another thing. And I like them big. I like to make sure that I get my technique on point at the biggest possible jump. Just because I know that's a struggle for a lot of people to do. And I want to kind of inspire people that it's not that hard, you know, that this is capable for you to do if you trained it. Uh, I would say a wall spin. Something about that one, it's uh, not a very practical skill, but it's because it, you could do it pretty much anywhere, as long as you have a wall or a car. I usually do a wall spin to like open up my car door sometimes just for the fun of it. And it's just a quick move that you could do, or at least I could do standing. I could just jump up, touch a wall, spin like upside down and land down. It doesn't take too much like effort, it has a nice look to it. It's interesting to a lot of people, and I like teaching that skill to others too. So, um, yeah, wall spin. Nowadays, much like in any other sport across the world, there is a culture around the sport of parkour and free running. Just like with soccer and football, there are parkour teams and groups all across the world competing at different levels and making videos for the world to see. Some of the most influential teams include Team Tempest, Storm Free Running, and Team Farang. Normally, it's the people who create these teams that are not only the most influential in the sport, but also the best at what they do. Every tracer or parkour athlete has a role model that they look up to and gain inspiration from. My favorite one, he's not parkour, he's tricking. His name's Anish Scherfra, he's a French tricker. He was kind of one of the starting few, there's a few of them. And he's actually one of the ninja, he's in both Ninja Turtle movies, fun fact. He's uh, Leonardo in both movies. But uh, I remember watching him when I was like 10 years old. And there's like this video, it's called Welcome to the Black Parade, that song by My Chemical Romance. And it's just, you know, him when he's like 18, and, you know, he's inventing all these moves that you see now as like these basics. But when he, you know, everything he did was flawless and perfect. And he's really tall, so everything looks huge. And he was kind of my inspiration for the sport. Um, if I were to go, well, kind of answer that with like two, I guess. If I had a uh, favorite first, like when it comes to famous, uh, it would probably be a uh, Foskey, uh, Spanish parkour athlete from GOP. Uh, I don't know a lot about him though. I have I've been out of the community for a while, but I do like to watch videos uh, from time to time. But I mainly like to watch him, and I just love his style. It's very fast. He's very explosive with his uh, movement. Very powerful and his technique is just on point. He's also very well-rounded. He's aware of all of his surroundings, and I just like that about him. And I guess favorite, number one, I kind of know in person. Uh, he's also a coach here, uh, is Zach Kikak. He, um, I like, kind of follow his style, and he just has a good outlook on life and training. He knows how to take care of himself, how to train properly, as opposed to many people that don't know how to train properly. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard, it's hard to pick one. There's been a lot of athletes that I've looked up to or been inspired by over the years, like David Bell, uh, Sebastian Foucan, who are both considered uh, founders and co-founders. There are other guys that um, 
they grew up together with that I looked up to as well, uh, a group called the Yamakaze. Uh, Daniel Ilabaka is a UK parkour athlete who I just love his style of movement. I've never met him um, or any of the other guys. So the ones I looked up to the most I probably haven't ever met in person yet, but I've met a lot of other new age athletes that are really talented that have inspired me after like meeting them just because we get to train together and I see new styles. So really, um, there's just so many new things happening all the time and I get inspiration from it all. So it's really hard to just pick one. Parkour and freerunning are an ever-evolving sport combination. It's hard to say at what point the sport will be in 5, 10, or even 15 years, but there is no doubt it will become even more popular. Due to the internet and the creation of YouTube, massive leaps and bounds in popularity have been made. It is with this it can be safely assumed that it will continue to grow in popularity and more people will know about it.